Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today we're going to be checking out the deck of character. So this is a new deck that was sent to me by the creator, and let me just read you on the back here. It says, one plus players. The DOC is a card game sparking beautiful conversation. It is a modern oracle, a system of whimsical symbols that will reveal truths and make you laugh. Wild woman, repairman, angsty teen, all of these characters live inside us. Are you ready to pick a card? Very fun at parties, bars, tea with friends, and quality time alone. So this, um, I've seen this deck on um, a couple of different people's channels and it looks like a lot of fun. So um, I was excited to, to give it a look as well. I've kind of already looked through it, so it's not like a full unboxing, but... Um, so it has a couple of different introduction cards here in the beginning. So the first one, it says introduction to the DOC. The deck of character is a modern oracle designed to spark conversation with the cards face down, ask a question, then select cards at random and see what you get. This is a tool of self-reflection to be used as you like. You can play alone or in a group, share your thoughts out loud or write them down, be inventive and follow your intuition. People around the world are creating their own gaming styles. The DOC is about self-empowerment. Speak your truth. We are all badasses. Hell yeah. So that's a pretty cool little description of the deck. Um, here it talks about the basic way to play. Now, I haven't actually used this deck yet, so this is just me taking a look at it for the first time. Um, besides, of course, as I said, seeing it on other people's channels. It's kind of like, I think, a game, but I think it can also be used um, for really for divination. Um, it talks about the card meaning. So it says, as you familiarize yourself with your deck, you can find a guide to the general meanings behind the cards on the website. So you have to go to the website. You can get a little, um, little bit more information about each card. And it says, but in capital letters, the point of the DOC is to show everyone that you already have a wealth of insight inside. Seriously, you know what's up. It's amazing when the skeptical dude in the corner suddenly chimes in with a mind-blowing insight. The cards in the DOC are designed to be disarmingly fun and accessible. Plus, it's okay not to know the answer. Snap a pic and look at it in six months. You, you may be walking down the street and wham, it all makes sense. Plus, great rows often have many layers of meanings. Trust your gut. I love that because that's kind of the way that I approach um, tarot and, and card reading in general. So I really like that idea and that approach to it. Um, talks here a little bit about uh, building your uh, formations with the deck, which um, is kind of like your spread, right? So it's about creating rows. Um, basic ways to play. We already read that one. Um, it talks about the art of asking questions and the mission and intention for this deck. I thought that maybe we would just take um, a quick flip through the deck. So let's start with the character cards. I believe there are 27 characters and I think they're in alphabetical order. So here we have the angsty teen. I don't know about you all, but I got one of those um, inside me and at home. <laughs> Baby angel, demon, Devotee, Dragon, <laughs> Drunken Sailor, Elves, Explorer, Fairy, I love that little fairy, it's so cute, Farmer, Ghost, these little images make me laugh, Grim Reaper, Knight, Love Goddess, love that one too. Majestic Whale, oh, I like that one. The Master, Mother, Naked Man, Poet, Repair Man, I don't know why that one makes me giggle, it just does. The Self, Thief, Unicorn, Watchdog, Weirdo, I love that card too, Wild Woman, and Wizard. 
dots. Those are pretty cool. I like those. They're kind of like little archetypes, right? Let's put that over here. Okay, next we have our tools. I think I counted 47 of these. So we have Band-Aid. Everybody needs a Band-Aid. Blood. Breath. Broken Heart. Bulldozer. Cauldron. Camouflage. Candle. Claw. Compass. Crystal. Dancing shoes. Door. Dust. Egg. Fire. Flower. Fuel. Gift. Glasses. Gold coins. Guitar. Gun. Guts. Key. Knife. Lasso. Leap. Lounge chair. Love potion. Magnet. Mirror. Poop. Punch. Rock. Ruler. Shield. Smoke. Spatula. Sprout. Stereo. Tears. Tongue. Treadmill. Vomit. War. And wings. There's some interesting tools in there. Some interesting tools. So next we have our places. I think I counted 37 of those. So we have airplane, bed, cave, circus, club, desert, dumpster, forest, gold mine, graveyard, heaven, hole, home, hot springs, house under construction, inferno, island, jail cell, maze, meadow, moon, mountains, ocean, open road, plateau, rainbow, resurrection, river, sunken ship, Swamp, the universe, the world, tornado, tunnel, waterfall, womb, and wrestling ring. Okay, so that's all the cards. I just wanted to... Um, Take a quick peek through here, make sure I didn't miss anything. So let's see, building formations. Every round of the DOC is unique in that you get to build your own roadmap. A classic row is one character, one tool, and one place. But you can build crosses, triangles, arches, anything. You can also pre-assign meaning to the spot in a formation. For example, spot X is the past, spot Y is the future, etc. So kind of in the same way that we would do tarot or oracle. I think I read the rest of these. So let's go ahead and just um, give each of these a shuffle and let's go ahead and pull them 
um, as it suggests, we'll just do a row. One character, one tool, and one place. Every time I see this deck, it makes me think of um, the game of Clue. Um, like, we used to play that a lot when I was a kid. So, so you know, it makes me think of, like, Mrs. Peacock in the library with the candlestick. Every time I see this deck, that's what it reminds me of, which is actually kind of cool. Um, I feel like this would be a really fun, like, game to play with people, as it, as it mentions. Um, and I love that it kind of has that flexibility of you can use it for yourself, and you can probably do some, you know, pretty deep... Um, personal development dive into yourself using these cards. Um, but it also has kind of that fun element of being able to, um, you know, kind of use it as a game. Um, I like that, that it has that flexibility of, of being kind of whatever it is that you need it to be in the moment. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, so we have our characters, our tools, and our places. I think that's the way it goes. So let's find out who our character is. We'll just draw off the top here. Our character is the drunken sailor. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So what is the drunken sailor going to use? He's going to use his dancing shoes. How fun is that? A drunken sailor dancing. And where is he going to be doing that at? In the mountains, which is probably a good thing so nobody can see him. So I think that's, that's pretty fun. We have the drunken sailor with his dancing shoes in the mountains. So let's just, I just wanna do another one real quick because just because that's kinda of just fun. So now we have elves. And our elves are going to use some fuel. Uh-oh, what are our little elves up to? And our elves are in the tunnel. So we have all of these little, little elf creatures and they're going to um, maybe lay a line of fuel down the tunnel and what are they going to do? They're probably going to light something on fire. So where our drunken sailor was off dancing in the mountains, just kind of doing his own thing, enjoying life and being out on his own, our little elves are like getting ready to set fire to things. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting. Let's just kind of keep the story going here. What happens next? I could see this being kind of a lot of fun. And as you can see, I'm not like actually reading it in terms of a divinatory term. I think you certainly could. Um, but I'm kind of having some fun reading it as, as, as a story here. So what do we have here? We have our devotee who's going to put on his glasses and jump into the hole maybe. Um, does he need his glasses to see the hole? Maybe he needs to put on his glasses so he doesn't fall into the hole. So what would we, how would we take this in, in a sort of divinatory um, as an oracle message? Um, you know, maybe this is a message to not just follow blindly what's laid out in front of you, to put your glasses on, to see things clearly for what they really are, and avoid those potholes so you don't fall into those traps of, um, you know, maybe following along in something that's not really in line with your authentic self or your own core beliefs. So as you can see, you can really take this, I think, and you could look at it in a fun way as I've done here with the drunken sailor putting on his dancing shoes, going off to the mountain to have fun. The little elves who are going to, um, you know, set fire to the tunnel maybe. Um, but here you can see, that, sure, it could be the devotee who needs to put on his glasses so he doesn't fall in the hole. But from a sort of oracle standpoint, it's also could also be, you know, a message that to, to look where you're going, to, to be careful and to pay attention to what you are putting your devotions into. Um, so I think that that's actually quite brilliant that you can use this deck in both of those ways. We can have the really fun experience with it in more like a game, more like telling a story, or we could take a look at it in terms of really sinking into an oracle message. Let's just go ahead and do one more. So let's see who our character is. Our character is the master, and the tool the character is going to use is camouflage. That's interesting, isn't it? And the place is house under construction. So that's really quite interesting. You have the master who puts on the camouflage, and he's building something, right? He's building this new house. You could even tie that back into our devotee glasses holes that we have here, and whereas we're being asked to be careful about what we're what we're devoting ourselves to, 
what we're following because maybe the master that we're currently following, the belief system that we're currently following is not really showing us its true colors. And it's something that we need to look at how it's being built, right? We need to look at where the foundations come from. And so I think that's really fascinating that you can read that in both in both ways. We could also look at this as the master's putting on his camouflage so he can go build a house for habitat for humanity and nobody will know who he is, right? Um, he's got to camouflage who he is so that he can go out and do his thing in the world and not really have to worry about people going, oh my gosh, there's the master, right? I know, totally silly, but I think that that's really pretty cool. Okay, so I'm thinking here, I just pulled out, um, I thought a black and white deck would be, would be pretty cool. So I pulled out my Moon Void Tarot. So let's see, let's just have a play here because that's kind of really what I'm doing. I'm just playing. Um... But what I want to see here is how we might be able to incorporate tarot into this. So I'm going to give these a shuffle. And my thought here is, and I'd be curious to see if you have some ideas of things you might be able to do with this using tarot. Um, because I, I, I love Oracle, I do, and I particularly like decks that I can do different things with. But I do quite like pulling tarot in whenever I get the opportunity to because I think it just adds a really wonderful layer. So I'm just kind of curious here. I want to see. Um, I think what I'm going to do is let's pull. Let's just give it a little shuffle again. Um, let's pull each card from each pile to be a position for our tarot reading. So kind of like the houses in, in Lenormand, let's let's do something similar. Okay, having, having a play here. A character, so we'll just take the one off the top. So we've got the ghost. And let's grab a tool. I love the size too, this is a really great size. I love decks that I can get my hands around and that I can shuffle. So the tool is a mirror. Oh, I'm liking this already. Ghost in the mirror. What you can't see and what you see reflected back to you, right? Although that looks a little bit like a scary ghost, not really Casper, right? Kind of a scary ghost. All right, so let's pull a place. Rainbow, that's interesting, isn't it? Okay, and let's give our tarot deck a little shuffle because now I wanna pull three tarot cards. Is death. Oh, well, just how fabulous is that? Transforming into something else, maybe something that you haven't seen before, or literally dying and becoming a ghost, however you wanna see that. So for tools, what we're going to use in our transformation to this maybe new way of being, we're going to use a mirror. And in the mirror, we're going to see the Three of Pentacles. That's quite interesting, isn't it? So Three of Pentacles is often a card of, of collaboration, of working together. Um, for me, the Three is the number of growth, and the Pentacles is the suit of... Um, of the physical realm of, of manifestation. So this could be about growing what we see in the mirror, right? Growing that reflection of the new being that we've transformed into. This ghost of a person we used to be stepping into growing what we want to see in the mirror. That could also be a case as well. And then finally we have, where is this going to happen? It's going to happen in the rainbow. And the rainbow, and get all this in, is giving us a message of justice. So how interesting is that? I love the um, the symbolism here in these two cards where we look at the rainbow, which looks like a scale, right? If you keep those two sides in balance, there it looks like a scale. So we have here we have the um, the heart and the mind, you know, coming into balance. The sun and the moon, bringing all parts of the self into balance, and that leads us to what does a rainbow usually tell us? The rainbow is usually like it's it's the happy ending, right? It's the pot of gold at the end of the the journey. If you look at it in um, Norse mythology, like the Bifrost is the rainbow bridge that connects the worlds. So I think that's really interesting that we have this idea of. Um, you know, the character as ghost being 
that transformation that we see in death. We need to look in the mirror and see where we can grow from. What can we cultivate to create this transition that we're looking for? And then bringing it all into balance with justice and finding that that transition into a different way of being. I, I think that's really fascinating. I don't know that this is really how this is all meant to be used, but um, I think that's actually kind of cool. So I think this is a really interesting tool. I love the flexibility of it. I love the uniqueness of it. The idea of having um, three different kind of prompts built in, right? Who's it about? What can they use? Where's it gonna happen? And you can also think of that in, in terms of an internal sense as well. What archetype is it tapping into? What tools do we need to manifest that archetype? And places could also be thought of kind of as energy, right? Because places tend to have a sort of energetic um, connection of their own. So how could you embody that, that energy? So I think that's really interesting. Um, I really, the characters I think are quite funny. I think there's a lot of depth and truth to these characters as well. It's not the typical archetypes that you normally see in a deck. And I think that's really interesting. Um, and I, I actually quite like that about it. Uh, the tools are definitely, um, there's a quite, there's definitely a, a big variety in the tools, which I think would make for really interesting readings. Um, you know, flower as a tool is totally different than blood as a tool, right? Um, so I think that's a really interesting uh, idea. I'm kind of curious to go on the website and look at the beatings just to just to see um, what the creator has associated with things. But you know, as as she says in her little cards, like they really are kind of meant to pull out the wisdom within you, which is really kind of how I see um, card divination in general. So that that really resonates with me. So, and I love everyday places like, you know, bed. And then we have places like the moon. Um, and then we have like this, this house under construction that we came up with. That one was interesting. The wrestling ring, right? That has a totally different connotation to it than say the rainbow. So I think that's really quite an interesting um, look at different types of ways to bring about divinatory messages, but I kind of love the fact that you can also use it kind of like as, as a play, as a game, as, you know, just having a little fun with your cards. As you saw, I pulled some tarot in even, which was actually quite fun. Um, I think there's a lot that you could do from a divinatory sort of oracle standpoint that way. But I also just love the idea of just like flipping these cards over and just pulling one and like seeing what little story you're gonna get. So we have the majestic whale with the stereo. Whales like music, right? In the ocean. I don't know that I could have planned that any better. So I love that you can tell this little story of the whale who goes out and he's singing a song in the ocean. I That's just a beautiful message. I think that that's, it makes for a fun little read. Um, you know, what's the whale doing? Where is he doing it? You could come up with a whole little story about this little whale and what he's getting up to. And you could also look at it in terms of a div divinatory meaning as, as in how does that relate to what I have going on or to whatever my question is. I think that's really interesting. I do want to see um, how it kind of works if you like assign, like say a past, present, future, because that was one of the things that they mentioned in, in the cards. So we think of characters as the, as the past, so maybe that's who I've been. Tools as the present, like what tools am I currently making use of? And maybe places as the as the future, where am I going? So let's just take a look at that. So the past is love goddess. That's kind of funny. Um, so in the past, maybe we were a love goddess. We were all about the love, baby. So what tools are we using in the present? We're using a compass. Compass is great for finding your way. Maybe we need to find our way back to that love goddess. And places for the future. So where are we going? We're going to the mountains. There's that mountain card again. Taking that love goddess energy from the past, we're gonna use our compass to find our place forward into the mountains. I think that works. I kinda like it. I think it works for me. 
So that is just a kind of a fun little deck. I'm quite enjoying um, working with it already. I'm really kind of looking forward to playing with it a little bit more, but I just wanted to um, give you all a chance to take a look at it in case you haven't seen it. I do wanna say a quick thank you to Hannah for allowing me to experience your wonderful deck. Um, I think it's kind of awesome and I'm looking forward to working with it some more. I'm looking forward to playing with it, to be perfectly honest with you, just getting the cards out and playing with it. I love when I can just play with cards. Like sometimes I get my tarot out and I just play with the cards. I just lay cards down. I don't necessarily have a reading that I want to do. I just want to play with the cards, right? I want the tactile experience. I want kind of the, the little bit of sort of practice, I guess, in a way. And I love that this deck is like, that is what this deck is going to be fabulous for. Just pulling it out, separating out your piles, pulling a few cards, telling yourself a little story, getting a little message, doing a little bit of, you know, intuitive practice. I think that's really wonderful. And I'm really looking forward to um, working with it quite a bit more. Thank you for joining me today. You will find links for the decks featured here in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.